With Koopa Cape, there's a better shortcut strategy the world record could use at the end of lap 3. The current method is to first hit the edge of this pipe, wheelie after exiting the pipe, turn, use a mushroom right before going into the waterfall, and then release a mini turbo once the mushroom boost wears off. However, rather than waiting to use a mushroom before hitting the water, what if instead we used it earlier? Here, I'm gonna use the current world record run set by Logan, which is a 217.176, and edit his run at the end of lap 3 to do this very thing. At the moment, I have taken control over the run, and I'll be using the mushroom right now. And look at that! By shrooming earlier, I have successfully gained quite a bit of time from Logan, so much that theoretically, you could off-screen his run. But why is this faster in the first place? The reason this saves time is because you're overall going faster speed-wise. When Logan drifts here, he drops all the way down to 84 kilometers per hour for quite a bit before shrooming. In Mario Kart Wii, with bikes, you often want to spend as much time in a wheelie as possible, as it is faster speed-wise than not doing one at all, provided you're not compromising the line you're taking too much. If we look at the speedometer, Logan was going at 96 kilometers per hour in a wheelie before entering the waterfall section, quite a bit faster than 84. By using the mushroom earlier, Instead of dropping to 84 when you start a drift, you go all the way up to 117 kilometers per hour. From there, it's just a matter of keeping your line tight enough around this turn. And then once you get past the waterfall, release a mini turbo and wheelie into the finish line. If you do everything correctly, speed-wise, you'll be going faster than the current world record strategy because you don't drop to 84 a single time. There are a few things to note with this mushroom strategy though. With the current world record method, there already is a risk of bouncing a lot taking this shortcut. If you look at Logan's run on lap 2, you can see he bounced several times going for the shortcut, which is unfortunately very normal when you attempt this. However, despite this bouncing, it's a very safe method because on laps 1 and 2, you need to hold out your drift anyway so you can release your mini turbo on a good line into the next lap. Plus, it's easier to start a turn while not in any sort of boost. And with this faster method, you can still find yourself bouncing, which isn't good. These bounces could send you wider, as you can see here where a small one in the water caused me to lose time to the other run on a screen that didn't bounce at all. Or you could get one after the water that interferes with your mini turbo release as well as your wheelie. Though I will say when I was attempting this method for the shortcut, I was bouncing a little bit less, mainly while taking the waterfall cut itself. The main risk when it came to bouncing was exiting the cut. Here's a couple of examples of me getting bounces while exiting it. With this first one, I managed to get a very small bounce, which did interfere with me releasing my mini turbo earlier. However, if you release the mini turbo and get a wheelie out as soon as you land from this bounce, you can still save quite a bit of time. Though as shown earlier, if you mess this timing up, you could really get screwed over. That being said, this can already happen with the current shroom strategy. And if you get really unfortunate with the bounces exiting the cut, you could really, really lose a lot of time. Basically, there's still a risk of bouncing regardless of which strategy you use. Another example is touching this great ting right here. You could also take the shortcut too tight and lose a lot of speed. Or you could have the ultimate failure and fall to your demise. Though it's obvious to see how these mistakes could happen with the current world record method as well. I will say with this method, as long as I kept the turn tight, I wouldn't bounce a single time. At least while in the water. The main concern when it came to bouncing was just exiting the cut and trying not to take it too tight or too wide. There's another risk as well, and that's not timing the shroom correctly. If you time it too early, the mushroom boost will wear off while you're still in the water, and you'll end up getting slowed down. You'll also have a harder time predicting where to turn. As I said earlier, doing a turn while not in a boost is just easier. And that's just because if you're going slower, it's easier to gauge where you're going. If I time my hop just slightly too late, I end up going incredibly wide, causing me to fall behind Logan before finishing the run. While this strategy is faster for lap 3, it isn't for laps 1 and 2. To show this accurately, I have taken Logan's run and edited the ending of laps 1 and 2. What I did is I adjusted the line he took here, allowing me to be on a straight path to the ramp ahead, 
Meanwhile, Logan had to turn in his wheelie several times just to get up to this ramp on an okay line. Logan also failed to get the wheelie out on the first frame after the first wheelie dropped, so I went ahead and fixed that as well. As you can see, with these adjustments, I am able to off-screen Logan's run. After that fix, I edited Logan's run again, this time using the shroom earlier like on lap 3, and taking a good line at least close to the end of the ramp. However, I had to hop to readjust my line, getting rid of the 96km wheelie, and dropping back down to 84 to start a new one. When I compare these two fixes together, the run that streamed earlier is currently able to pull ahead of the other run. However, the fact I had to fix my line before the ramp negated this time save. And if you're curious, it's not faster to use your mushroom earlier and then hold your mini turbo so you can release it onto a straight line to the ramp. That's because you have to spend so much time at 84 km per hour just dragging out your mini turbo so you can be on a good line to the ramp ahead. So is this shortcut strategy worth going for? Well, the main issue is that you'd have to go for this at the end of lap 3 on a track that already has a lot of inconsistent things you need to gamble for. For example, there's a shortcut over the grass that you can do without any sort of item, but sometimes going for it doesn't give you any air, massively slowing you down. There's also this one entering the pipe where you ride the wall. Ideally, you want to stay on the side for a bit, and then get off it so you can charge a mini turbo, and then release it so you can ride around this wall a lot more easily. However, Logan's run on lap 2 failed this strategy, forcing him to go around the turn normally. Versus Luke's run as shown here, which was the previous world record set on this trek, he lost quite a bit of time as a result, and this can commonly happen. There's also this pipe strategy here, the bounces on the waterfall, and several other things that can easily go wrong. Koopa Cape is a very tough track to time trial, and just getting to the end of lap 3 while getting everything else to work seldom ever happens. And as shown earlier, there are still things that could go wrong attempting for this shortcut strategy. To get it to work, you have to time the mushroom correctly, then start a drift at the right time, hope you take it tight enough, and then still have to risk some sort of bounce at the end. So while viable, it would require people to practice it first, or chance it in a run to squeeze out additional time save. Though I will say, if the formal world record by Luke used this strategy and Logan didn't go for it, Luke may have maintained the world record, so it's time saving enough that it may be worth going for under certain conditions, like if you're just falling short to setting a faster time for yourself. And one last thing, I know it's been sounding like I discovered this strategy, but this is something that's been known for years. I remember seeing this first with LTX87's task on Koopa Cape, which he did back in 2011. However, because it's really not being used in time trials right now, I decided to make this detailed video explaining everything about the shortcut for your viewing pleasure. Before I finish out the video, I want to give thanks to the creators of Mario Kart Wii Service Pack. They're the ones who created all the extra graphics like the speedometer in the input viewer, as well as making it very easy to compare runs. All the footage you saw here today was actually recorded with an Elgato capture card on a Wii U. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please like and subscribe for more informative Mario Kart Wii content. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.